Welcome to The Light Conversations. Today I am delighted to speak with Lori Main, a massage therapist whose work deeply connects with the energy beings that we are. Hello, Lori. How are you today? And where in the world are you at this time? Hi, Dada. I'm coming from Vancouver, my home here in BC, Canada. And I have been in lockdown for two months as well, but we've just received notice about a week ago that massage therapists are allowed back into practice. So we've been working and examining that question, therapist by therapist, um, deciding whether we're ready to engage in the new, with the new protocols. And yeah, so that, I, I'm in that process of, opening back up to the public practice. Interesting. Well, that's quite exciting that things are, are emerging out of a shutdown. So mm -hmm. how, have, how has this experience been for you, this lockdown? I would, I would have to say it's been sort of two waves of experience for me. The first one came with this, the actual lockdown. Um, that was a surprise to my nervous system how much it it shocked me um to be t to have the, the rug pulled out from under me no more income no more practice and it was the practice part that i hadn't seen as being so pivotal and so vital to my navigating the world and so not having a daily practice and what that gave me both inside and outside of myself was a really um, up, upsetting event for my nervous system. So I would have to say that was the first wave and, and I went into a freeze. I noticed myself shutting down sort of in a panic and my response was to, to go inward and just hold tight. And, and, and I found myself actually, I did get sick. That's when I did get um, maybe it was the coronavirus. I wasn't tested, but I did get pneumonia and an upper respiratory infection. And I spiraled downward from the fear and the grip and the, the collapse of my nervous system. And then the second wave, um, I was, I came out of, I did my work and I was coming out and it was a beautiful growth opportunity to observe myself and give myself what I needed, um, to come out of that free state. And, um, then we were told we were allowed back but here are the conditions it, it's not going to be what you knew it's not it's going to be a different um, environment and I had changed as a result of the work from my first priest I I was a different being coming out of that it was a beautiful healing six weeks and I can share more about that experience if, if you want but I felt like who was showing up to my practice was now a different being and so it's yet again, a, I don't want to go back to the old because that's not who I am yet. I can't go back to the old anyways. There's all these conditions. How, do I want to go back? I, there are all these inner questions and discernment. Um, and there was a bit of a freeze yet again. It was not a quick, oh, this is what I have to do. Clarity of mind, prefrontal cortex experience it was a muddle it was a, a lot of procrastinating it was doing everything but the one thing i needed to do that day it was it was a real challenge that second wave to even start putting into practice what needed to be done if i do as i do want to enter practice again so there were two distinct sort of shutdown responses in, in my experience and that was a really a beautiful learning for me it wasn't easy there were a lot of sort of dark nights of the soul moments of reflecting and, and, and um, despair and, and grief work that came up. Um, but that was all part of an opportunity. So that's been my experience. I, I don't know about um, other people, but definitely two, two, mom two sort of hits to my nervous system. The, when lockdown and then when I had to come back out into the world. Wow, what a journey you've been on and the way you yeah. describe it, it you're, you're so emotionally intelligent and emotionally aware. <laughs> Would you say that's, that's thanks in part to your training and your study that you've done along the way? I mean, has that given you tools to, to kind of understand your process, your personal process? 
Definitely, definitely. I, I feel like my life has been a breadcrumb trail of, of being given what I need when I need it to gain more insight and capacity to hold those inner questions. And, and, and the first 50 years of my life, those questions felt very separate from my outer world, like a real split. Like, why do I, and, and people would say, oh my gosh, you're just so sensitive or you think too much or all of these uh, judgments you might say on that inner voice of mine. And can't you just let it go or relax? Or and, and some of it ha is a product of trauma, but the ruminating and the constant thinking. And yes, I mean that was, but that was that was my deck of cards. And so for 50 years, I've been a very inquisitive person, but it's been turned inwards with this: what's going on? Why I'm a Libra, and as a sign, you know that that need for balance has been an overriding an overarching quality yet when there's not balance in the world when there's disparity when economic when there's so much fracture out there I, as a child how do you make sense of that and that desire for for peace and harmony for a long time was put into trying to make that around me or trying to change the outer world and and wrestle with that and be angry you know the feminist voice and the, the allied voice and seeing the disenfranchised and and so that has been a big part of my identity and and that energy behind it the rage the the upset i want to bring the peace i want to bring the balance and and even in my work going into massage therapy it's this desire to bring the balance to somebody and uh, that external projection of that inner angst or cry within my heart for why this isn't this isn't right this isn't true we i think there were and that really was the seed driving me was this isn't true and i want to know peace inside myself i want to know that it, it switched from the outer to the inner and i would say this for me the big catalyst was the death of my mother um, that grief, that trauma, that it, I couldn't process it. I had no ability to move through that change in my life. I maybe could find the resources to meet other changes in my life, but that was just such a heartbreak that my experience of the world collapsed and I went into, a, into the deepest freeze part of me that I, my nervous system has, has ever held. And I got to connect with a freezing part of me that froze in response to this isn't right, this isn't fair, that, that those two could finally meet. It was like the outer freeze finally met the inner freeze. And there was this opportunity for integration, for the, for the two to come together and start being healed. So I'm so grateful for being a massage therapist um, in that it gave me permission to keep exploring all of the different modalities and what works in the name of what works for other people, but in the name of what helps me be a better massage therapist and helping others. Yet really the search and the, the, the mission this whole time has been to tend to that, that deep freeze within myself that couldn't process the discrepancy of what I saw on the outside and my loving heart on the inside that just knew love as and and that we're all there's no separation between us and that we're we're all in this together and there was a deeper knowing but i i i needed to find that through this journey of the outer struggle yeah. thank you for sharing that i mean what i'm hearing is in your description of your experience with your mother and also in the experience that you've been through in the last few months you have this amazing ability to like turn something around into a learning experience and growing from it in such an inspiring way and i've heard you mention the nervous system quite a few times that's obviously really important in the work that you do how do you help people connect with their nervous system and how do you work on the nervous system no, that's that's just um, 
such a layer that's coming into our understanding through some lovely beings uh, whose work has been here for a long time, Peter Levine and Stephen Porges, these people who, who've been studying the nervous system and our response to stress, Dr. David Berselli. Um, and it, I was just exposed to all of that world in the last, I would say, year or so. It's very new to me and I recognize it's been around a long time. So for me, it gave me permission to frame my experience of myself in a way that made sense, that no longer was this inner voice that was so grasping and ruminating, something I was living with on my own, but oh my gosh, we all have this part of us. And it's, it's actually a sign of a part of us that didn't have what we needed to move through and let something drop away in the past, that we're still stuck in a moment trying to make sense. The mind's trying to do what the body wasn't able to complete. And so because I have been a body-based therapist, it, it's like, oh my gosh, I feel like a fraud. How have I been working with the body all this time and not honored the body's role in working with stress? And that I, as a therapist, actually can't do anything for, this, for a being holding a lot of stress. I, my role is to help them discover for themselves they're able to move through something and be uh, what we would say regulated in, in my own being so that this the person I, I'm, I'm sharing space and time with can have a chance to regulate themselves. There's this lovely feature called co-regulation. And I really wish I knew about this when I was a parent because children need to be in the presence of someone regulated more than them at some point during the day it is very helpful and when my kids were born i was very anxious and wanted to be the perfect mom and looking for how to and, and really tied to their needs and so they could actually you know the tail wagging the dog for a bit that because they could bark and, and i would respond because i couldn't stand seeing them suffer or need something because i was uncomfortable with watching i was triggered with their upset i'm now upset and so this idea of co-regulation that just breathing and being in our grounded state, able to feel our body, be here now, the idea of being embodied, breathing, and holding space for myself first, and then from that place, engaging with another. And we could call that being able to attend another human being but first we need to attend ourselves. and i was missing that i've missed that for 50 years because i didn't know there was a part of me that wanted attending it took that much life experience and you know moving around with the eddies of, of my river to kind of soften rocks and, and open up those places that were ready to reveal themselves as hurt and needing that attending and so as I at could attend myself, um, then I can attend others and hold space with others. And people will make comments about miracles or, you know, I just need to come in and, and, and your magic or, or this kind of language around my work. And it's not that, it's, it's the magic is within all of us. It's tapping into the life force that wants us all to thrive and be in our beings in a way that creates space for all of who we are, that we can attend ourselves, that we have compassion for ourselves, for these places that are acting out and are dramatic and are messy and, and aren't perfect. And so that's been um, a, a gift, I would say, of life to help me come to a place now in myself that I can attend myself more and more. As a, as a reliable practice. And in doing so, I'm able to attend with others. And I'm still learning. I feel like a little baby in this. Um, like I said, it, this whole world has sort of opened up into my awareness. And I by no means say I am, um, I, I have this down, but it is a shift in orientation for me 
from pra in a in a way of being with patients and and clients and my hands and my even my who I am coming into practice I'm a being of service and in massage therapy we don't get this we're we're very much trained in the allopathic model of diet assess we aren't allowed to diagnose but physios diagnose we might they come up with a pretty sure guess of what's going on based on all of the the data and the, the assessment and then develop a treatment plan and then deliver um and that's not a model that this works within because it's about the person's own healing and um capacity being what drives what shows up what wants to be honored and explored it's a partnership where there's a, a curiosity it's i don't have the i don't have the keys i don't have the clues i can only be a really good listener and so right now my my practice is to just notice in my body when i'm off my breath when i'm not grounded that that's a reflection that something's up for for the person i'm with it's, and and so come back to myself and then be curious even more and ask, listen for the, the right question to ask or the invitation for this person that they that i'm perfect with in that moment i'm because that's why we're together there's a perfection and a reason that we are together in that moment and make sure that i don't i don't miss that opportunity to be of highest service to this being so it's it's a different way of practicing um now and i'm still body based and assessing but there's that's really just a small part of it the bigger part is meeting people in this larger um place and there may be a, a time when i'm not a massage therapist i hope that was part of my two month crisis you might say of oh how do i enter into practice and stay in integrity with my understanding of how how this really works as a in terms of the opportunity before me to support another human being in their healing journey so it, and and we'll see how that question unfolds indeed i mean you've just you've just shared so many insightful and helpful things from the co-regulating idea of parenting which by the way thank you so much for that i'm definitely going to hold on and and incorporate that into my daily existence at this very challenging time but moving mm -hmm. to the work that you were just describing the energy body and and meeting people as your higher self and, and the word that kept coming to me whilst you were speaking was integrity you are very mm -hmm. much in your integrity and i hear that when you speak and and I know that of you and it's, it's so beautiful. And it reminds me of like, when I got into yoga, training as a yoga teacher, it was such a physical practice. But then as I learned about the energy and, and everything around the physical practice, I was like, yes, I want, I want to learn more about that. So I hear you talking about mm -hmm. everything beyond the body. And, and I'm really interested to see how you, progress with that work as well i mean i i think it's a really good combination though the body work and the kind of uh, ability to coach and and support yeah. i think one of the things i picked out from your bio was was helping people to connect to and shift the root causes of dis-ease and i noticed it was written in two words on, on purpose certainly dis-ease can we talk about that shifting and connecting to dis ease which is slightly mm -hmm. disease exactly it's it, it's it's to embrace what's not feeling so comfortable right now and framing it with the opportunity to be with it and let it inform us and the body is longing to be known it is our informant in this vehicle through life and you know, traditionally the body's been so ditched in in our intellectual spiritual traditions as not being helpful or being the, the source of so much sin or destruction or it, it, it it's time to redeem our relationship with what our bodies have 
to offer. They're longing for us to appreciate them, fall in love with them, let them speak to us. It's almost like that split is is causing the bo our bodies can be seen as the planet and what's been happening we've been ravaging the planet and forcing it to do what we want it to do and making it into our vision of perfection and using it as an it using it as an other creating the separation and it's we're extracting resources from it just like we're doing with each other through through relationships and this transactional way of being this objective like martin buber would say the i thou holding others as an it outside of ourselves it's time we we're seeing the destruction of the quality of human relationships we're seeing the, the quality of our earth we're seeing the quality of our own being autoimmune disorders mental health cancer we're, we're splitting because we have a, a split in how we understand the world it, it to be and our first nations people have so much to offer us in our ability to challenge our paradigm of the othering there is no separation our body is us wanting us to i see it as like a stool with three three legs and we've been trying to move through life with our will body and, and physically efforting and just being smarter and stronger and, and more manipulative of others so that we can win the game. What with one gimpy leg and, and not going anywhere, just spinning and, and I'm in fact imploding. And it's time to, to restore our perception of, of the entire whole as mattering every part matters and it's no wonder all of the you know the me too movement and black lives matter and these movements are arising as a as a a wave of of consciousness on the planet because the earth is saying me too she's literally saying me too right now as well i think this two month pause we're seeing when we're out of the picture she she can flourish when, when, when my ego is out of the picture, my body can flourish. It knows how to be Lori. It knows how to breathe. It knows how to tune to the world around me and be fed by nature, be fed by the moment. The moment wants to feed me. And I've been so busy trying to make the moment happen. I've been starving. I've had an anorexia of a, an eating disorder for myself, cut off from from what's been right there you know meanwhile I was pulling my hair out going I'm starving and it's just been like you know the little bird or the the little seedling coming up the, the the leaf coming in the spring they are all there as acts of of gifting us what we need to come back to our own bodies and our own cherishing of what our bodies can bring us and as women oh my gosh don't get me started we are gifted with a a, a garden of of gifts and and cherishing that we can re reclaim and be fed by and that's our our birthright and so i get really excited by remembering the body and i'm a body worker and yes i i long to help others i'm helping myself first and i don't have the i'm not the guru but i'm a sister in in for all for anyone who wants to explore this um, journey together because I I'm I'm tired of being hungry you know it's time to be full yeah that's beautiful um, as as is the nature of this situation being in lockdown occasionally a child might come that's in perfect hello <laughs> hello I love Welcome. what you're saying you are a sister and you're there to support women particularly on your journey that is that really like your favorite work to do is not just women i'm a sister of men and women we're all i'm yeah. a sister yeah yeah i i guess i i don't identify myself as a leader or a teacher or someone who who has it all figured out or is is you know has this package of a product no i'm i'm bumbling along this thing called life and i'm very raw and transparent and ready to share and if my journey 
inspire someone else. I have the, I think my gift is the is that insight and that emotional intelligence to see the patterns, to hold a lot of space and love for myself that there's not a lot of shame in sharing my journey, the places that have been hard, um, the places I have been less than skillful in, in supporting my myself, my kids, my my partners. Yeah, I made a lot of mistakes because there were these unconscious parts and um, if that can support someone else in 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 be, in holding more light for their unconscious places, their shadows, their uncomfortable bits, you've got your number one ally in me. I, no judgment. I can. I, I'm happy. I'm really happy to walk beside and 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 hold space and attend um, your journey. And uh, that's my. That brings me joy. I love. I feel alive when I'm when that. I'm doing that. And let's just go into that idea of holding space for a moment because not everyone listening is going to know exactly what that means i think most people will do but holding space it's a big part of what you do isn't it what does it that is to you um i touched on it a little bit already but it first is about being aware of my own emotional and physical my, my own state of being bringing that awareness uh, putting the life mask on myself if i have been out of my what we might say the window of tolerance of being with a certain situation that's that's a term used when when we're no longer co uh, conscious we're, we're part of us is drifting off dissociating or thinking about dinner tomorrow or our we're in our thought world um or numb so that holding space is to be aware that i'm here and and to be aware that i'm in this moment requires grounding connecting to my body that's a helpful way for me to 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 come back if i have drifted off you know um there's certain techniques used for, to help um, people come back by noticing an object outside smelling something using our senses to come back into into our into our place and time that's a really um big piece we can't attend someone else when we're not attending our own state of being so holding space requires that the coming back to yourself and checking in and that the mindfulness movement's really bringing a lot of awareness and that's been wonderful for so many people to have oh i'm not i'm 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 checked out you know and time to come back and and, and be here now in, a, in my body. But mindfulness doesn't necessarily bring us back to our body. And so that's why I'm, I, I'm really kind of, if I'm on a high horse, it's about the body's role in coming back to ourselves because it has become chopped off. I I'd had a mindfulness practice for years and realized I was using it to survive my crazy mind and just find some calm, but it wasn't filtering into or integrating into my body and so we can actually even use mindfulness as a distraction or part of how we cope with and and so or yoga can be used i've used yoga for kind of getting that high of the, the, the bliss and that endorphin that rush um so i feel ah but i'm not embodied i'm not even present why was I, why was I, what was the rush I was escaping from? You know, it was even creating a, more of a disconnect or, or valuing one state over another. So coming back into my body has meant feeling some uncomfortable parts, feeling the numb parts, feeling the tight, the cold, the, the ones I don't feel, um, and being curious about that. So that is the first thing for holding space for me. I, I, you, there may be other people who have a different definition of holding space but for me it's largely been come back into this world now because i can splinter off i'm quite ethereal i can i can work on you know my life from a completely disembodied level and work we make a difference when we're here now embodied engaged with another human being and we're designed that way that we can only heal now in present time and we affect the other in present time 
And if only we knew that that's all we are asked to do is to be in present time here and it will radiate and change the world. There's, I've heard it said that if 10% of us were able to hold ourselves in present time and attend and let that co-regulation expand to other beings so that they had a chance to kind of come back to themselves, the world would transform because it's that powerful, this power of embodied love and space, spaciousness and acceptance and being with what is, without the judgment. And what else? And what else? And, and when I'm triggered, there's a wonderful mantra. And, and can I include this? Can I ground even more and, and include the upset that's got me triggered? And a, a, a beautiful person gave me that insight and i'm holding that very closely these days if i notice that i'm not able to attend that's that's how i need it can i include this in my my expansiveness this too can be included i exclude nothing i exclude nothing from from my being that's my my growth edge and my ability to attend, to attend more and more the drama of the world right now the crisis of in, in equality, the what what's rising as being so apparent in, in the dual world structure that we're living inside of. My remedy is within me to attend myself when I'm in that. And that might mean not listening to the news or following the news. That might mean holding a tighter boundary with people who who really make it hard for me to to hold that for myself and just create a little more space so I can build that muscle of attending. So boundaries come up, you know, new boundaries, new language that, that I might not have had if I have a desire to attend someone. Life mask first, it has to go on me first. And for somebody, for myself, that tended toward um, codependent type relationships, that can be a real upset because you know people in codependent relationships benefit from you being in that type of relationship. And when you start having boundaries, they're not so happy. That's a threat to the the rules. And the and so part of the healing and becoming more embodied and learning and, and being able to attend necessarily brings in the boundary conversation and the boundary making in a new way and that can be new for that's new for me the libra who you know peace at all costs that was my family growing up and that was kind of what was comfortable for me those scales balance and the growth opportunity is no no not at all costs peace doesn't come at all costs peace comes from hold, holding my own center and making peace really matter that inner peace is all that matters and holding, learning that boundaries from that place. So it's been a real um, inside job, you might say. It, it is an inside job. I love that, beautifully put. Talking about like the gift of presence and how it allows others that space to move into it themselves. Like just mm -hmm. while, you're, while you're saying that, I think those are the most precious moments in life when we can truly be present with somebody else. And I like to think right? that these conversations are a bit of that for me. Right. Mm -hmm. Here we are right now, absolutely present with each other. And my heart is expanding thanks to this experience. Um, and I love what you said also about like how life living holding space it's all an inside job and that's really great food for thought as we approach the end of our time together i can't believe how it's flown i think before we go is there anything um what are you looking forward to as we now emerge from a lockdown um like butterflies from our cocoons <laughs> i mean you yeah. are, us in the uk we're not there yet we're not um we have another few weeks i think it's like they're saying that we can soon meet as groups, six people in a group, but staying two meters apart from each other. This is like the next step for us, which is a little awkward. Um, but, you know, after spending that much time away from people, it's like, 
do I even want to go out there and engage with anyone? It's a, it can all happen digitally now. So what are you yeah. looking forward to? Oh, I agree with the cocoon metaphor, you know, or I've also been really resonating with the seed, you know, that I feel like I've been a seed that's been planted for 50 years and dormant and understanding that the importance of my roots, that they, ha they have me, they have my back and feeling my roots in my, where do I draw from, um, to have that in place now and to feel the shoot it took so much effort that the dark night of the soul that shadow work this last two months you know really cutting through some rigidity and hard places in the seed and coming up into the light of of more surrender to it's you don't know Lori, and this is okay but you will and you will be supported you're all you've always been supported Look for the helpers, look for the guidance, listen for the guidance. So I'm, I'm looking forward to navigating life with more of me, all of me speaking um, in, 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 a, in an informed, being able to be informed from all of who I am and listening for the next. And I don't know, I'm looking forward to the mystery. I said, I, there was a chapter in my, my life, I would say I just closed maybe a whole book that was called the, a dedication to mastery and i'd reached that and i would say kind of in my profession at least felt like I, I i got this i know how to nap i know what i'm doing and you know almost do a session blindfolded with my eyes closed and now this is called dedication to mystery and so from mastery to mystery and i'm i i I'm trying not to be judgmental about the old book. I want to just burn it. <laughs> that's my, that's the, ju the judge or amigo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, it, it brought me to here. And so I'm really looking forward to, to embracing mystery. And I don't know. And that's, I, I never have really known the I that's connected to all. And, and so please inform me what's next. I, I don't know. And I'm showing up and I said yes to this podcast when I was like, oh my gosh, what do I have to share? What do I, I just little old me doing my thing in the corner of the Vancouver of the, of the world. And no, I'm saying yes to uncomfortable places and uncomfortable conversations because the discomfort is just the growth, the growing pains. And so, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited and I'm also kind of, crapping myself but those th those are the best moments in life i've found is when i'm saying yes and putting on my diaper as i say to my friends you know then i know i'm fully alive not in a ridiculous jumping out of a plane tossing myself but i know i'm saying something that really it's going to change who i am and i'm and i'm willing to die to who i think i am i'm willing to say yes to that because i'm not a fixed person i'm not a fixed identity i want to evolve and grow in this lifetime i want to be that seed i am that seed and i'm, I'm a little sprout right now so water light and grow that i'm ex i'm i'm looking forward a long-winded way of saying i'm looking forward to a little more ease of my for my figure it out mind um that it can take a it can it can rest now it's worked really hard for 52 years you know um and i'm looking forward to moving up with the grace of of, of life yeah and, and and flourishing blossoming yeah well here's to your blossoming and may you enjoy the mystery every step of the way it's so wonderful to check in with you and you always have such Thanks, knowledge to share it's it really is always a delight to be in your <laughs> presence and to speak with you and I find you very inspiring and I'm really glad you could take part in this podcast series. So I guess this is bye for now. Until Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Jada. Day and all of that. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> bye bye. So we just were recapping on what you're looking forward to and I had just stopped recording, but I hit record again. Tell me what it is that you've just trained in. I was so blessed. Well, as I was in that free state, when we just locked down, I got an email from an amazing woman, Suzanne um, Skurlock, 
who is the author of Full Body Presence and Healing from the Core. She she offered a course for um, craniosacral therapists and other therapists who wanted to learn long distance healing since we couldn't be hands on anymore. She had been she already had a curriculum developed for distance healing. So I jumped in even in my free state. I knew I listened and I heard that this is a this is a breadcrumb. This is the helper showing up in times of, of, of crisis. And so I had seven days with her daily practicing the ground in the fill that she practices. And it was to facilitate long distance healing. But little did I know the gift in that was getting the healing I needed to come out of the freeze state. Uh, and I, she was my life ring. And I'm so grateful for that class. But as a result, I was also able to sign up for a two year mentorship program. And I'm doing exchanges with other practitioners. We're all learning how to bring our hands on practice into the, the non hands on world and getting an incredible witness. I guess for that science part of me that's like, ah, how can I make a difference if my hands on? I'm on? Getting this, oh my gosh, look at you're getting the same benefits as if we were in share. And it's from that attending, from that co regulation. This is beyond space and time. This is into the world of quantum. We don't use that language, but this is that would explain what happens in a distance healing is holding space for someone and being able to help someone else explore what's up for them. And um, so that's what I'm looking forward to is developing that. I'm adding it to my website, long distance healing, and I can do that from anywhere. We could have a phase two with this lockdown and I'm, I get to do what I love still. So that's also what I'm looking forward to. Awesome. Well, that's a really, I'm glad I hit, I switched record back on because that's a really interesting and beautiful thing that you're offering, long distance healing. So on that note. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jada. Thank you. <laughs>